everyone. Following the NXL syllabus where the picture of Dorian Gray is taught for its overarching theme of the supernatural, we'll go through the themes and motifs that encompass this in these videos. In today's video, we'll look singularly at the theme of memory and morality, and we'll delve into the quotes which highlight this as well as analysing them. Of course, these aren't essay plans, but they'll definitely help us later when we create the essay plans comparing the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde to Beloved by Toni Morrison. As always, here are all the branches of the theme of memory and morality that we will explore today. Loss and the past, good and evil, truth and lies, and secrets and mystery. You will see that some of the themes and motifs may overlap with each other, and that's fine. However, for that reason you will notice that as we progress into the video, some branches have less to be spoken about, only because we would have covered them already in the other branches or other videos. Let's look at loss and the past. Firstly, a little disclaimer. I would like to note that as death is included in this section, and at least one section from previous videos, it will only make sense for you to go back and watch those. I would not have said anything new here about death. Perhaps the greatest loss in the novel, besides death, is Dorian Gray's youth and innocence at the end of the novel. The narrator's last lines inform us, lying on the floor was a dead man in evening dress with a knife in his heart. He was withered, wrinkled, and loathsome of visage. It was not till they had examined the rings that they recognised who it was. Here the irony that his material likes makes him recognisable is shallow, sad and in line with the endless and fruitless endeavour for beauty. Indeed Dorian also loses his reputation here. He is no longer a connoisseur and pinnacle of art and beauty. He too is flawed and he lied to everyone around him. Perhaps one could say that Lord Henry saw this coming, but the narrator doesn't tell us anything about Lord Henry. When Basil confronts Dorian Gray about the death of Sybil Vane, Dorian insists, what is past is past. In shock, Basil replies, you call yesterday the past. Here, the idea of the past is given two extremes. Dorian's sadness and initial shock is suppressed by Lord Henry's words and Basil wants him to mourn for longer. This is interesting as Basil throughout is given the role of the pathetic lover. He pines for Dorian to be just as he was when he painted him. He yearns for Dorian to be a good person. This of course gets him killed, because Dorian is adamant that Basil is the root cause of all his misery. The narrator gives us an insight into Dorian's mind. For Dorian, the past could always be annihilated. Regret, denial or forgetfulness could do that. But the future was inevitable. There were passions in him that would find their terrible outlet, dreams that would make the shadow of their real evil. Dorian continues to look for either the beautiful or the sinful, he doesn't stop, meaning that what is past is past well and truly for him. Let's now move on to good and evil. We have already looked at sin and corruption and guilt and redemption. These two themes fall under this branch of good and evil. As you have seen in total, that would be three whole videos. We won't look into it. Instead, go back and watch those videos. What we will look at, however, at least on a surface value, the theme of morality and immorality. We first see this in the preface. The narrator tells us there is no such thing as a moral or an immoral book. Books are well written or badly written. That is all. In the first sin and corruption video, under threat and influence, we said that it seems almost as though Wilde was expecting backlash or even a trial case against his book. Thus, his defence is brought to us before even reading the book. Lord Henry insists that all influence is immoral, immoral from the scientific point of view. He says this in criticism of society. In his view, the terror of society is the basis of morals. Here Lord Henry insists that morals come from society. It is a product of society. He goes on to say individualism has really the higher aim. Modern morality consists in accepting the standard of one's age. I consider that for any man of culture to accept the standard of his age is a form of the grossest immorality. Lord Henry claims that the definition of morality is to do what society labels as moral. In his eyes, to accept these expectations and standards, one is a hypocrite and therefore immoral. Moreover, Anthony Berger states, Dorian Gray dismisses all individual responsibility. Dorian attempts to dismiss morality and responsibility. Indeed, in chapter 2, Dorian Gray wishes for a Faustian pact when he says, There is nothing in the whole world I would not give, I would give my soul for that. 
Interestingly, after seeing the effects of his cruelty on the canvas of his portrait, Dorian Gray vows he would not see Lord Henry any more, would not at any rate listen to those subtle poisonous theories that in Basil Hallward's garden had first stirred within him the passion for impossible things. Of course, this is all thrown right out the window at the first chance. Thus, Dorian Gray dismisses all individual responsibility. Let's move on to truth and lies. Without a shadow of doubt, the greatest lie is making everyone believe Dorian was young and that he was sinless because if we go back to what Basil tells Dorian, if a wretched man has a vice, it shows itself in the lines of his mouth, the droop of his eyelids, the moulding of his hands. With Dorian, he is so flawless in his physical appearance, people just assumed he was faultless. Thus, when Basil sees the real Dorian, i.e. the portrait, he is so shocked that Dorian lusts to kill him with mad passions of a hunted animal. Dorian Gray lies to the world again and to Lord Henry when he hides the fact that he killed Basil. In fact, he hides the fact that he had anything to do with Sybil's death at the start of the novel. He also tries to lie to Jim Vane about the death of Sybil Vane. When Jim finds out that Dorian lied to him, he begins to stalk and prey on Dorian, only to accidentally get shot and die. How sad. Now let's look at secrets and mystery. Perhaps this section can in some ways be considered a subsection of truth and lies. We first hear of secrecy or concealment in the preface. The narrator tells us that to reveal and conceal the artist is art's aim. Here we find out that concealment is one of the overarching themes of the novel. Moreover, Dorian Gray is described by Lord Henry as Basil's mysterious friend, creating an enigma around Dorian's identity for Lord Henry and the reader. Basil decides that secrecy seems to be the one thing that can make modern life mysterious and marvellous to us. It seems to bring a great deal of romance into one's life. Here, secrecy is praised and preferred because it adds mystery and excitement. Yet, Basil refuses to exhibit the portrait because he's afraid that I have shown in it the secret of my own soul. Here, secrecy is too raw to be exhibited. Lord Henry has different views, as always. When he says American girls are as clever at concealing their parents as English women are at concealing their past, readers are given a misogynistic viewpoint. Lord Henry's misogyny is no secret. He believes that secrecy leads to disloyalty and lies. The narrator tells us that ordinary people waited till life disclosed to them its secrets, but to the few, to the elect, the mysteries of life were revealed before the veil was drawn away. This highlights that the secrets or the real nuggets of life come from those who actively go to seek them. This comes after we're told that out of its secret hiding place had crept his soul and desire had come to meet it on the way. Here perhaps Dorian Gray's soul, his inner real self, and desire, being the portrait's persona, meet. Interestingly, after this meeting, if you will, it all goes downhill for Dorian. We already know how Dorian hides the portrait to keep his secret safe from Basil and the world in chapters 9 and 10. Despite rumours, Dorian Gray still tries to go in disguise to the opium dens in chapters 15 and 16. Dorian Gray hides Basil's body in chapter 14 with the help of Alan Campbell. Thus you see secrecy encompassing Dorian Gray's life. This marks the end of this video. If this has helped you, comment down below and give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this and click the bell to get post notifications whenever I upload. Until next time, stay alert, stay safe. I'll see you very, very soon.